Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and on today's video, well today's video is the weekly running and training vlog where the main purpose of this video is for you to tell me about your week of running. I want to hear about your successes and I definitely want to hear about those setbacks. Go ahead and let me know in the comments right now while you're watching this. Okay, but before we get into my week of running, before I tell you about the runs that I did throughout the week, I did come across an article in Canadian Running Magazine that talked about a study that was done last year, February 2021. So not that old. And I was fascinated with this study because it's actually pretty good news for each and every one of us. Now, if you've been running for a long time, I want you to keep watching and I really want to hear from you to see if you can look at your numbers, crunch the data and let me know the results. And I'm going to tell you what you're looking for in just a second, although you probably have some idea by the title of this video. And if you are a fairly new runner, if you have just started running in the last couple of years, this is going to be fantastic news for you. And I guess we'll just get right down to it because age is nothing but a number. And I say that a little tongue in cheek because with age comes the inevitable slowdown. We are going to slow down as we get older. But this new study found that it's actually pretty minimal. So the article in Canadian Running is titled Study, colon, Consistent Training Can Reduce Age-Related Decline in Marathon Performance. And then the subheading really gives it away. A recent study found that with a high level of motivation, runners can slow age-related speed decline down to as little as 5 to 7% per decade. You heard that right, guys. 5 to 7% decline every 10 years. That's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive what the human body can do, but let's get into it. Let's talk about the study. Oh, and then I have looked back at some of my data and I'm going to share some of that with you. Now, I haven't been running very long, but I have been running for about 14 years. So I do have quite a bit of data to use in my own analysis. So for some of us, we are going to have to suspend our disbelief when we look at the participants that we used in this study and then kind of interpreting those results to fit our own results. Because this study used 40 participants and the criteria that the research as one of the participants to me was that they wanted to run a sub three hour marathon in five decades. And the researchers came up with a very clever acronym to describe these group of runners that has run a sub three marathon over five decades. And that acronym is 5DS3. Now don't feel bad if you can't figure it out. Just let me know in the comments and I'm sure that someone else will be able to explain 5DS3 and what that actually means. So clearly the low sample size is because it's, it's pretty difficult to run a three hour marathon. It's even more difficult to do it over the course of 50 years in three separate decades. In fact, you've probably heard the statistic that only 1% of the population has ever run a marathon, while out of those 1% of the population, only 4% of male runners ever run a sub-3 marathon. Only 1% of female runners ever run a sub-3 marathon. That kind of explains why we're only looking at 40 individuals. Oh, and out of those 40 individuals, only one of them was a female, and that's Joan Benoit Samuelson. And you may remember Joan Benoit Samuelson from being the first woman to ever win the Olympic marathon. So the strength of this study really comes in the fact that they have used the same individuals throughout the course of their running life. They followed the same people who have consistently run fantastic times over the course of their running career. Now up until this point, the only way that researchers have been able to tell how we decline as we age is by looking at runners in their 20s and 30s and then comparing them against runners in their 60s and 70s. And from there we can kind of extrapolate. But clearly there are a lot of problems using that methodology. And it's great that we have got so many great athletes that we can actually do this study and we can find out for sure this study really found out, using real world examples, how much we are going to slow down as we age. Now there are a lot of caveats, but we're going to talk about a few of those in just a minute. So you might think that this study was using elite athletes, so these athletes are a little different from us, like we can't really identify with elite athletes other than we do the same sport. There is certainly a big difference between the average runner, like me and maybe you, and elite athletes. But this study actually used a pretty good cross section of runners. In fact, only 11 athletes had run under 2 hours and 20 minutes, and only 3 had run under 2 hours and 15 minutes. Most of the athletes ran their very best time, their career personal bests, between the ages of 25 and 34. And the average age for personal bests was 26.9 years. If you've been running for a while, let me know how old you were when you ran your personal best in the marathon distance. So most of the runners in the study, they ran very similar times up until their 40s. And after their 40s, their speed only declined by about 7% a decade, which comes out to an average of about one minute and four seconds slower each year. That's pretty fantastic. I would take a one minute and four second slowdown each year. And the difference between the runner's best marathon and their slowest marathon or their worst marathon, I think worst marathon is a horrible way to put it, but the difference between those two marathons was only 26 minutes. That's over the course of five decades, plus or minus nine minutes. This is really telling us that if we stick at it, which we really should, running is a lifelong sport and we don't have to expect our times to drop through the floor just because we're getting a few years older. It's a very gradual decline. Oh guys, and by the way, I am going to put a link to the Canadian running article 
article and the actual study in the show notes below. And if you are enjoying about hearing how good you are and how good you are going to be over the years, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so right now. Okay, so one of the main reasons that people slow down as we get older is that our VO2 max decreases. But the researchers also found that the very best masters runners are able to run at a very high percentage of their VO2 max as they get older. And of course, the researchers do acknowledge that as we get older, as the years pass, we do tend to make a few changes with our training. And those changes come in the form of intensity, duration, and how much and how we recover. But the researcher points out, and this is, this is huge, this is the takeaway of the video. The researcher points out that the main factor in preventing age-related decline is motivation. It takes motivation to keep training at a high level. It takes motivation to keep pushing yourself and getting out the door every day. It takes motivation to train and race hard. Guys, I get it. I, I, I can understand why a lot of people kind of fall off that run and wagon as they get older. It takes a lot of work to get out there and push that heart rate through the roof. And it's understandable why some people just stop. They stop putting in the work. They stop being motivated to do that. They find other motivations. And if you can hang on to that motivation, you are going to see some great gains as you get older. Okay, so to encourage you marathon runners, if you've been running a little while and you want to go back and pour over some of this data, I have compiled some of my own data to share with you. And I do recognize that like all statistics, they can be kind of tweaked to make them fit our agenda. Statistics are a funny thing that way. But on your screen right now, I have a graph and this is my fastest marathon every year from 2008 all the way to 2022 when this video is being filmed. The observant of you are going to notice that 2011 is missing. That's because I was injured a lot that year. I didn't run a marathon in 2011. But guys, I've got to say, looking at this graph, I'm actually pretty happy with how this 14 year span has turned out. Now, clearly there is a slight upward trend in the line towards the beginning of my running career. That line drops below the three hour mark quite a bit. Clearly it does get a above that three hour mark a lot more as the years go on with sporadic drops down to the three hour mark. But overall, it appears that in this first decade or in this first 14 years of my running career, I haven't slowed down that much. But let's just take a look at a decade snapshot. In 2010, I ran my lifetime personal best marathon at the A1A Marathon on February 21st, 2010. On that day, I clocked a two hour, 51 minute and 59 second marathon and I was 32 years old. Fast forward 10 years to 2020, I was 42 years old. I ran a three hour and 37 second marathon at the St. Pete Run Fest on February 9th, 2020. So two hours, 51 minutes and 59 seconds to three hours and 37 seconds. So over that decade, I have slowed down 4.78%. Pretty happy with that. Okay, but get this. Now this is how we skew statistics. So between my very first marathon all the way back in 2008 in Miami, when I ran a three hour, 30 minute and 58 second marathon, and my last marathon, the 2022 Boston Marathon, when I ran three hours, eight minutes and 30 seconds. So remember, 2008, 2022. I've actually improved 11.92%. So if we look at statistics that way, back when I was in my prime at 30 years old, running my first marathon, I have actually improved over 11% in the last 14 years. That's pretty good. I'll take that. So guys, what do you think? Are you excited to keep running over the next 50 years? I guess you have to start pretty early if you want to run for 50 years. But it doesn't matter when you start. The point is, is that you can keep going probably for longer than you think. All right, guys, I had a pretty good week of running this week. It started off with 10 miles, very easy. So I was very hot on Monday, so I was just going out, turning my legs over, breaking a good sweat, but just taking it easy. Because I don't know if you remember from last week, but I did end last week feeling pretty tired. And the difference between ending last week and starting this week was just one day. So that Monday morning run was a bit tiring too. But on Tuesday, even though I started tired, I was able to pull it out of the bag and I knocked out 10.3 miles. But on this run, I warmed up for 2.3 miles. Then I did 12 400 meter repeats with 400 meters recovery in between. And then I did a very easy two mile cool down. And those 12 400s were actually, they were actually pretty good. Now at the end, my heart rate was really getting a bit jacked. It was a bit hard to hold on, but I did hold on. And then to reward myself from putting in some work on Tuesday, I took Wednesday off of running. And after taking all that rest on Wednesday, it means that Thursday I had to put in a little extra effort. So I knocked out a total of 8.2 miles. I warmed up for two miles and then I did five miles at a tempo pace. Although to be honest, by the time I got to that last mile, I was running a little fast. I was getting more to that threshold level. And then I cooled down with 1.2 miles. So I felt really good after that run. There is nothing like a tempo run to get you feeling good, even when you're not feeling like it in the beginning. And then, as that was my last session of the week, I knew I had to look forward to easy runs. And on Friday, I knocked out 10.1 miles, very easy, followed by 13.1 miles on Saturday. Again, very easy. Now, to be honest, on Saturday, I didn't plan on running 13.1 miles, but I was getting 
pretty close to that half marathon distance. And I knew that if I did run a half marathon, I'd get the Strava half marathon badge in May. So there we go. You never know what little thing is going to motivate you to take that extra step, go that extra mile. And then finally, on Sunday, I wrapped up the week with 10.3 miles. Very easy, although I did throw in eight 30 second strides right towards the end. And I really did that just because I wasn't feeling like it at all. The 10.3 miles was a bit of a slog, even though it was an easy run. But sometimes that happens. Anyway, that run rounded out my week to 62.06 miles, which is about 99.88 kilometers. I wish I would have known that I only had 0.12 kilometers to go to round it out to 100 kilometers, but what can you do? All right, my friends, thanks for staying all the way to the end of the video. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.